Hey guys, my name is Pixie, and today I'm going to teach you a few tricks for using your own custom font in App Inventor, specifically for numbers, titles, and a little extra flair in your layout. Before you watch this video, you should know that I consider this tutorial to be an intermediate level of difficulty. This means that I assume that if you're watching this, you understand words like component tree, properties window, horizontal layout, etc., and that you already know how to use App Inventor, but maybe you're looking to improve or enhance your app's design. You'll notice that when we get to the block section, I've cut out about 10 minutes of footage, most of which is spent dragging blocks around the screen. I consider that to be a waste of time. So let's get started. You may be wondering if there is a way to install a font into App Inventor, and there isn't. Or at least from what I've read, it's a popular demand that has yet to be implemented. If you've used custom fonts in the past, you may already be familiar with the concept I'm about to describe. For example, if you've made a game in any of the RPG makers for PC, you've probably achieved a custom font using a sprite sheet of letters A through Z and numbers 0 through 9. You would read a string of text and replace each character in that string with the corresponding sprite. Unfortunately, we can't use a sprite sheet or image mapping in App Inventor, but we do know that we can concatenate strings together to form a word, and we can access files in our media folder using join text blocks. We're not going to work with letters, and you'll see why in just a second. Using your desired font, create an image for each number 0 through 9 in Photoshop or whatever image software you use. In the app that I'm currently working on, you can see I have this little coin bar in the top left corner. There are a couple of things to note from this image. The player cannot exceed 999,999 coins, basically six digits. Otherwise, the numbers would overlap onto the coin and it would look really sloppy. To achieve something similar in your app, you can use a horizontal layout or a canvas. I'm going to use a canvas because I'm thinking about possibly adding some animation later on. So because of that, I'm going to save each number to be the exact same height as the coin bar background. This way, I don't have to guess if each image sprite is aligned perfectly on the Y axis. I can simply set the Y value of each number to zero, the top of the canvas, and this will align each number perfectly in the vertical center of the background. Before you save your images, it's important to understand how fonts work. You'll notice that the characters in some fonts have identical width and height, and some do not. For example, even though I've saved each of these numbers using the same dimensions 16 by 68, the numbers themselves do not have the same dimensions. This next part is optional, but it will make the overall appearance look a lot cleaner. I'm going to jot down the width of each number. A quick way to find this out is to press Ctrl plus A, which will select everything, and then Ctrl plus C to copy, and then Ctrl plus N to open a new document. I'm not actually going to open the new document. I just want to see what the width of the image is without having to guess or resize the canvas. In my notepad, I'll just write 0, 16. I'll do the same thing with number 1, select all, copy, new document, and the width for this number is 10 pixels. Then I jot it down in my notepad, 1 and 10. And I'm going to do the same for the rest of my numbers. Put a pin in that for now, we'll just use it in a second. When you're happy with your images, upload the file into App Inventor. I'm going to open up my test screen and show you exactly how this is accomplished. I'm going to center this so it's easier to see. Grab a canvas and make sure that it's the exact width and height of your background image. In this case, my background image is this little coin bar. Then add an image sprite for the maximum amount of coins you want the player to have. In this case, I'm using six because I don't want to go outside the bounds of this inner rectangle. With six digits, my max coin amount would be 999,999. If you were using only three digits, then your max coin amount would be 999. You can name the canvas or the coin images whatever you want. In fact, digit 1, digit 2 would probably be the best option. But keep in mind that the first digit should be on the right side and the last digit should be on the left. We're reading from right to left. You can place these images wherever you want. You can see that my numbers are all over the place. That doesn't matter. As long as you keep these images in order from right to left. We're going to fix the alignment in the block section next. Start by creating three variables, coin max, coin list, and coin list width. The coin max variables declares the maximum amount of coins a player can have at one time. I'm using six different image sprites, so my coin max is 999,999 coins. Declare coin list and coin width as empty lists. Grab the initialize event for the screen you're working on and a new procedure block. I like to create an initialize list procedure to start populating the data in the lists. Increase the items in the coin list to match the number of image sprites you're using. I'm using six image sprites, so I need six items in this list. 
Note that I've named each image sprite as coin slot 1 through coin slot 6. Coin slot 1 is actually the image sprite to the farthest right, and coin slot 6 is the farthest left. We're reading from right to left, so the first item in this list should be the image sprite at the right end, and the last item in the list should be the image sprite at the left end. You'll find every component name at the very end of the blocks available for that component. Then insert the name of the component into the coin list. Then fill the rest of the list with your remaining component names. This coin list can be any size you want it to be. If you're only using three image sprites, then this list will only have three items corresponding to those three components. However, this next list cannot change in size. This is where we add the widths of the numbers we created. If your numbers have identical widths, you can skip this step. This list should have 10 items, one for each number. The first item will be equal to the width of number zero, and the last item will be equal to the width of number nine. You can change the values of these widths at any time if you change the images that you're using to represent your numbers, or if you just don't like the way they look and you want to add a little extra padding. When you're done, add this procedure to the screen's initialize event so that it executes as soon as you start your app. Now let's work on the update coin procedure. To ensure we don't exceed our coin max, add a quick check each time this procedure is called. Basically, this says if the amount we've entered is greater than the maximum amount of coins a player can have, then set the amount to the maximum amount, no matter what. Next, create three local strings. Set string amount to an empty text block. This means we're declaring this variable as a string. Array will be an empty list, and x is the starting value of the first image sprite. In this case, I'm saying that I want the first number to appear on the canvas's x-axis at 140 pixels. Now this procedure accepts strings and numerical input, but we want to ensure that we're grabbing a string so we can determine the length of the input. So we'll set string amount to the value of amount. This will convert any number into a string. If we had declared amount as the value of string amount instead of a blank text block, then we would still be working with numbers and strings. So this is why we needed an additional block for this conversion to work. Next, grab another local variable, call it length, and set its value to the length of string amount. Then create a loop. I like to set each index to be named i instead of number, but you can call it whatever you want. This block will loop from index 1 until the last index, which is the length of string amount. We'll populate our temporary array list with each character from string amount, one character at a time. So if we entered the number 237 as amount, then the length would be 3, and the temporary array would look like this. Create another loop under that block. This time we're going to loop backwards through the coin list. Instead of starting at the first index, we'll start at the very last. This next part will ensure that we hide any extra image sprites. For example, if your amount is 237 and you allow six digits, you wouldn't want to display 000237, unless of course you do for a sci-fi theme or something, then you can skip this step. So if the length is 3 and you're on the fourth loop, then 3 minus 4 equals negative 1, and negative 1 is less than 0. So we will set the visibility of this image sprite to false, so it's not displayed on the screen. Add an else statement to this block and two more local variables. Call them coin image sprite and current number. Copy and paste the select list item from above and stop right there for a second. Ideally, you want to minimize redundant block copies, which is why we're creating a variable. We do this to limit human error, because if we had three or four of these blocks and we needed to change it for some reason, we would have to change all other occurrences of that block. Using a variable, we can simply change the value of the variable one time. So then you may be wondering why we didn't place this local variable block above the if-else statement. That's because although we can check for null values in a list, we'd still have to perform an additional if-else statement, and this procedure is already pretty lengthy. So I'm going to keep this as it is, but bear in mind that you want to keep redundancy to a minimum, or not at all. So coin image sprite is set to the current index in coin list, and current number is set to the current index in the temporary array. We can now move the current coin image sprite to the specified values of x and y. If this was the very first image sprite, it would be set at our initial value for x, which I had declared earlier as 140. But you can set it to whatever position looks best in your design. The y value will be a constant 0, since I made each number to be the exact height of the canvas. Then each image sprite can be set to y equals 0. Then make sure to reset the value of x for the next loop. X should now equal the current value of X minus the corresponding index for this number plus 1 in the coin width list. 
Note that we're adding plus one because the first item in this list is zero, but the first index in this list is one. If you skipped the coin width list and all of your images have the same width, you can simply delete the select list item block and add the exact number you need. For example, if each image has a width of 16, then you can simply use X minus 16. Now we need to make sure that each coin image sprite is visible, just in case it was previously invisible if the player lost or gained money. And lastly, we'll set the image sprite picture to the correct media file. I've named each of my numbered images as coin n0 through coin n9, and they're all PNG files. So this block will look different based on the names of your files. When you're finished, add this procedure to the screen's initialize event. Remember that you can pass any value into this amount. Ideally, you'd want to retrieve this information from a database, but you can also use a text or a number block. Keep in mind though that your user should not have control over this input. So this is not something you'd want to use in a text box component because humans make mistakes. So if your user entered 6789N on accident, then this wouldn't work properly. The procedure would read 678 and 9, but there's no resource file named coin NN. You can now run the app and test it out for errors. Try filling up all six digits and make sure it appears correctly on your screen. Then try using a number that's ridiculously long to make sure your coin max check works. Then try a smaller number and also just try zero. If you're having problems, refer to the screenshots of the blocks provided in the video description below. Now, you may be thinking, hey, if I can do this with numbers, surely I can create something similar using the letters A through Z. And you're right, you technically could, but you would then have to create an image component for every single character that you're using. What if the word was main menu? Not so bad. But what if you needed a paragraph like this? Holy smokes, are you really going to create an image component for all of that? That's just madness. Instead, create an image in Photoshop for larger blocks of text. If the image is too big, you can always add a vertical scroll arrangement so that the user can scroll through and read the entire image. Lastly, you can create titles or buttons using images as well. So why would you want a boring old run-of-the-mill start button when you can use a pretty image instead? So that's all for now. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments below and have a great day. Bye!